All right, on to another design lab. This time we'll be upgrading the media controlled LED strips we set up last time. Instead of just lighting up 10 LEDs, we'll be lighting up the entire strip, and then we'll play around with the fast LED library a bit. By the end of this design lab, we'll be one step closer to designing a really cool system that any music producer can use to light up their space with their music. I'm going to quickly recap what happened during the last devlog. We got the USB MIDI interface working with Ableton, set up the MIDI test circuit, confirmed that MIDI talks with Arduino, got the fast LED library working and tested with a single LED, connected MIDI to the LED, got 10 LEDs working, and then played around with simple patterns. Let's begin. I had to reset up the system from last time, so here are the parts and I will go over how it differs. The biggest change is I was powering all the LEDs and everything off the USB power, and it has a limit of 500 milliamps. The LEDs, if I plan to light up a whole strip, will take a lot more than that, so I can't rely on the USB power anymore. I'll be using an AC adapter like the one you see here. This one can go up to 3 amps, which means it could power up to 60 LEDs with, at full brightness, as each LED draws 50 milliamps. I got a new LED strip. This one's actually a lot smaller, and the spacing between the LEDs is a lot less. This one's actually 30 LEDs per meter, and the one I was using was 60 LEDs per meter. I have a feeling I'll like the 60 LEDs per meter one better, but I just want to try this one and see how it looks. I've also added in my beloved hub. So in will come the power from the AC adapter, and I've added a large capacitor here for handling the ripple that the LEDs are known to have. And then the Arduino will be connected to the hub using ground, and the power, from the, Ardu the power to the Arduino will actually come from the USB. So the USB will just be powering the Arduino, I'll have the power from the LED strip go in through here as well, and the data line will come from the Arduino. All right, so everything's connected now. I've had to use electrical tape just to attach the LED strip to my table for now. It does work. Maybe in the future I could do something more permanent. Just to recap, the LED strip will be powered from the AC adapter, and the Arduino will be powered using USB since I still need to program it. If I want to make it a standalone system, all I need to do is power the Arduino and the components, through the hub as well, and that will work just fine. The bottom layer is the larger green one and it starts off at actually at a lower brightness level so it's supposed to look like it's fading into the background. Then the pink one's brighter and smaller and sits on top of the green one. The pattern I was playing with before that layered two little dots I thought was pretty cool and I think it has a lot of potential. I imagine multiple tracks of a song, for example the bass line and the melody, being expressed as different layered patterns on a single LED strip. So I want to play around with that a bit more.
I'm just going to explain what I've done so far in case it's kind of hard to follow. So I have this pattern going across and it's controlled by two knobs. This knob controls the delay or the decay, I guess. So now this is very little decay to a lot of decay to the point where it's always on. But we could find a sweet spot like that. This knob controls the speed. So this is super fast, seizure inducing. Then it gets slower, then to the point where it's very slow. Let's find a good happy medium. Okay, I installed a button and the button acts as a trigger and triggers a layer on top of the layer we see right here. I just have it putting up three LEDs in red over top of the purple ones. But it does work, although if you notice when I put down the red, if the purple comes across it, it'll just wipe it out completely. Yeah, like there, there we go. So that's something to kind of figure out right now. This whole time I've been playing with HSV color mode, HSV as in hue, saturation, and value. And the fast LED library has a lot of RGB functions as well, so I want to check those out. The RGB color mode in the fast LED library has addition where you could actually add two colors together and the result is what's displayed. The library also has saturation built in where the result of the addition will never go beyond full white. This could be a cool way to layer. Instead of having distinct layers on top of each other, all the layers will actually combine and mix and will lead to interesting color palettes. Here I've set up a more clear example of this phenomenon in action. This code I have is, so once I press a button, it displays a, a 10 LED wide bar of a single color, either 100% red, 100% green, 100% blue. And I've done it so there's a very slow fade out, so we can kind of see what happens once they combine. Blue, green, blue, blue, green. Okay. So the blue and green are combined in the middle and you could see it's a more of a teal color until they fade out. Green, blue. So the blue's on top and now it's teal. Blue again, got some red in there. Red, come on, combine. Okay, so now the green and the red combine to make yellow in the middle. Uh, and like that, yellow in the middle. Now all three of them actually for a bit there. As you can see, RGB addition can lead to some pretty cool patterns. So far, I preferred over the distinct colors of the previous method, but I guess each will have its place. I think that's enough progress for this episode. I feel much more comfortable with the fast LED library now, so for the next design lab, I'll be adding MIDI back into the mix and testing them together again.